Hello friends and family and welcome back to our boring meditation stuff for October 31st. Uh, it is a Saturday and I could do a Halloween themed video, but <laughs> instead I'm going to do a Saturday themed video uh, and talk about video games. I've had this concept rolling around in my head for a while now, the idea of um, taking the original Vipassana for Hackers paper I wrote and talk I gave and kind of transmogrifying it into uh, Vipassana for gamers, um, whether that be board gamers or video gamers or otherwise. Um, if you're not a gamer, you might really not enjoy this talk <laughs> very much. Um, so I won't feel bad if you stop now. But um, for those of you who've enjoyed games, uh, particularly as kids, but in any time in life, um, there was a really distinct moment, specifically during my second Vipassana course, um, where it felt incredibly similar to uh, the experience of playing through a video game. Um, there is this sort of, there's difficulty, there's hardship, you're um, working, struggling, sometimes you fail. And um, by the end of 10 days, it's, o it's only 10 days, but... <laughs> Um, you you tend to feel like a bit of a hero just for making it. Um, and the specific video game that I had in mind um, when I actually took this course was uh, The Legend of Zelda. And of The Legend of Zelda series, specifically A Link to the Past. Um, there's good reason for this. There's a real distinction between the kind of um, normal world you see day to day, fairly mundane world, and uh, fairly plain world. And then there is the world which reveals itself to you uh, during meditation. And it doesn't have to be the meditation hours. It can be uh, the periods between meditation. You can walk around, you can see outside, uh, you can spend time in your residence. It's not very exciting in there, but you can. Um, and you get, you get a, a sense of relationship with um, the external world and sensory input uh, by doing this. And that world, at least on my second course, uh, was incredibly dark. Um, it almost felt as though uh, huge clouds had descended over the Vipassana Center. And the course itself was an unbelievable struggle. It was incredibly difficult. And this dichotomy, of course, it plays out in all sorts of mythology, but the mythology of Zelda um, pits a light world and a dark world. So the light world is the boring, regular world of humans and whatnot, and the dark world is uh, the world created by um, Ganon, Ganondorf is the He's the bad guy in Zelda, and he's he's constructed this um, world of evil from what was previously a sacred world. Um, and it really felt that way. It felt like I was battling through the dark world, and then when I emerged from the course, I kind of re-emerged back into reality, um, the light world. Things went back to normal, and... Uh, and I, I went back to my life. Um, there is a, a, there's an icon in uh, the Zelda series, which is the Triforce. It's three triangles of power, um, and each one represents 
power, wisdom, and courage. Um, and these ideas, again, they're kind of slightly, they're somewhat tired, you know, um, ideas from mythology, but uh, they're very enjoyable as a child and especially in a format where you can play through them. So generations for hundreds of years have always had to either use their imagination or they read epic tales uh, or they hear stories or they watch plays, but actually executing a video game is much different. Um, you are the hero in a video game. There's no question about it. It's not like reading a book. And so you put yourself in that position. And Vipassana is, is no different in that regard. It's, it's very first person. Uh, you're not there with the other 100 people or 200 people who are attending the course with you. Um, in fact, you're supposed to ignore them and they're supposed to ignore you. Uh, the purpose of the Vipassana Center is to act as a school, so you have access to the teacher, but otherwise uh, you are to live a monastic life, which is a solitary life. Um, as best you can, you emulate living in the forest by yourself with access to a teacher <laughs> and meditating the entire time. So obviously in the modern world, we can't send a bunch of uh, regular folks off into the forest to fend for themselves. So the Vipassana Center exists as a kind of happy medium between throwing people into the forest and making them beg for food like real monks and um, the normal life of having your comfortable bed and your comfortable TV and your comfortable internet connection uh, and all the other distractions <laughs> of normal life. Um, but this first person perspective of playing through a Vipassana course for the first time um, involves all of these aspects. So at first, especially for the first few days or the first four or five, sometimes six days, uh, you tend to feel, or I've tended to feel quite powerless. Um, and the first sort of emergent quality that you find is courage. You have the courage to, first of all, take the course, and then you have the courage to actually engage with the course. So the courage to try on a Pana meditation um, seriously all day, every day, for three days, three and a half days. Um, and then the courage to do Vipassana meditation and um, the courage to face all the difficulties that come up um, in Anapana and Vipassana meditation. And there are different difficulties between those two meditations, um, but it's sort of, it's really a trial of difficulty. Um, difficulty after difficulty, um, some of the difficulties are sort of tricks <laughs> So you start to feel like you're really mastering this meditation thing. Um, and of course you're not. <laughs> so you've lulled yourself into a false sense of security and then one of the, the regular dark difficulties comes back. And this theme of the light world and the dark world um, is sort of omnipresent. Uh, not from any external input. Nobody's telling you this. It's not as though um, the teacher or the uh, Dhamma talks given during a Vipassana course have anything to do with the light world or the dark world or Zelda. This was all in my head. Um, and only during my second course, oddly enough, none of my other courses uh, have felt as strongly like that. Um, but that was certainly the case. And Unlike a video game, there's no kind of, there's no big climax, right? There's no, there's no final boss to defeat on the ninth day uh, before you can actually go out and um, talk to the, uh, your co-meditators. Um, and so it, there is this kind of 
dampening effect of the 10th day when you can finally talk um, and then you go out into the world and uh, and things are generally quite different um, from when you went into the course of course all of that is just a perception change it's not as though the world itself is changing all around you just because you meditated for 10 days um, but I, I actually do, I have this, this strange feeling that if I could describe this, uh, this experience and, and this analog well, um, I might be able to convince one or two friends who really enjoyed Legend of Zelda when they were 12, or however old I was when I, when I played Legend of Zelda, um, that as an adult, now here is another a challenge that that is worth taking and similar in many respects um, okay that's enough Legend of Zelda talk for one day I hope everyone is taking very good care of themselves and very good care of everyone around them and I will talk to you all tomorrow goodbye <laughs>